Be Your Spirit, A Guide to Happiness and Self-Realization Based on the Yoga Sutras. Non-Reaction. Non-reaction is the central principle of yoga practice. Non-reaction pertains to how you react to your experiences and thoughts. In particular, non-reaction relates to your response to pleasure and pain. Pleasure and pain are powerful forces in the conditioning or training of the mind. Parents, educators, and psychologists are well aware of how these forces can change behavior. The ego self uses pleasure and pain to manipulate your actions for its own benefit. The ego self rewards you with pleasure when you act in a way that expands the ego self's sense of power. The ego self punishes you with pain when you do things that reduce its power. From a yogic perspective, the ego self imprisons you through the chains of desire and fear. The practice of non-reaction is the key to liberating yourself from the ego self's programming. The Yoga Sutras, chapter 1.15, non-reaction is the will to observe experience without a reaction of approval or disapproval. The programming of the ego self is weakened each time you interrupt the reflex to grasp after pleasure or withdraw from pain. Each time you satisfy a desire for pleasure, you reinforce the programming that drove you to pursue that particular pleasure. Every time you allow fear to control your actions, you weaken your ability to confront that fear. Hardraft states that a disciplined practice of non-reaction brings you closer to freedom by cutting the tendrils of attachment. Quote, Every time a distracting impulse is noted but not obeyed, the body-mind sees through and beyond it, gaining energy and inching closer to discriminating awareness. Close quote. The principle that underlies non-reaction is similar to a concept found in cognitive behavioral psychology called classical conditioning. The concept of classical conditioning was developed by the Russian physiologist Ivan Pavlov. Pavlov is famous for his research in which he trained dogs to salivate upon the ringing of a bell. Dogs do not naturally salivate when they hear a bell. Pavlov trained or conditioned the dogs to salivate by ringing a bell each time the dogs were fed. Over time, the dogs grew to anticipate being fed when they heard the bell ring. Eventually, the dogs began to salivate upon hearing the bell, even if they did not see any food. The essence of Pavlov's research was that a conditioned reflex can be created by pairing two unrelated stimuli. The key concept in classical conditioning is the repetitive paired association of stimuli. In other words, classical conditioning involves the repeated presentation of two experiences. In Pavlov's study, the two stimuli were food and the sound of a bell. The repeated paired association of food and the bell created a new reflex response. The dog's natural reflex to salivate in response to food was transferred or associated with the ringing of the bell. The yoga practice of non-reaction is based upon the paired association between a thought and an emotion. First you have a thought, and then you have an emotional reaction to that thought. For example, imagine that you were insulted by a friend. On the following day, you find yourself thinking about that insult. Your thought about the insult is then followed by an emotional reaction, for example, anger. Each time you think about the insult and you feel anger, you are creating a repetitive paired association. The more you repeat the association, the stronger the conditioning grows. 
Eventually, you will have conditioned yourself to get angry each time you think about that friend. Non-reaction involves breaking conditioned emotional responses by interrupting paired associations. When thinking about that friend's insult, non-reaction would involve calming your mind and not allowing yourself to attach an emotional reaction to that thought. Rewiring of the Brain Donald Hebe, a Canadian psychologist, developed a neurological explanation for the conditioned response. Hebe's theory of synaptic plasticity proposed that repetitive paired associations create a rewiring of the brain. The wiring of the brain is composed of neurons which are elongated cells that conduct electrical signals. For the sake of simplicity, we can think of each neuron as a wire segment. When the input side of the neuron receives a signal, it travels down the length of the neuron to its output terminal. The neuron's output terminal is connected to the input terminals of other neurons, sending a signal to the input of one neuron can result in a chain reaction across many other neurons. The more frequently a signal travels through a specific chain of neurons, the stronger the connection grows between those neurons. This relationship between neurons is similar to the creation of a trail through the woods. The more frequently the trail is traveled, the wider and clearer it becomes. The clearer the trail becomes, the more likely it is to be taken by other travelers. Similarly, the more frequently a signal travels through a chain of neurons, the stronger the connection grows between those neurons and the more likely future signals will travel down that particular path. Dogs have a group of neurons that are active when the dog sees food. The seeing food neurons have a well-established connection to the salivation neurons. When the seeing food neurons are active, the salivation neurons are also active. The seeing food neurons and the salivation neurons are naturally associated. The ringing of a bell each time the dogs were fed created a neural connection between hearing the bell and salivation. A repetitive paired association develops when two experiences occur within a meaningful time period. In Pavlov's experiment, he rang the bell as the dogs were being presented with the food. If he had rang the bell 30 minutes after the dogs had been fed, it would not have been meaningful to the dogs. In order for a paired association to arise, the two events must occur in a meaningful time period. The shorter the time period between two events, the stronger the neural paired association. When two neuron groups are active within a meaningful time period, they will begin to develop a neurological connection. Scientists have coined a phrase to summarize this phenomenon. Cells that fire together, wire together. Hebe developed his theory based on the electrical relationship between neurons. He proposed that the relationship between neurons was plastic, meaning that neural connections can change. This dynamic has been referred to as Hebean plasticity. Returning to the wire analogy, we can say that Hebe theorized that the wires of the brain actually move to create new connections as a result of repetitive paired associations. Whenever you learn something new, your brain is growing new wires between neuron groups. Hebean plasticity also works in reverse. If you reduce the frequency of a paired association, the wiring between those two neuron groups will wither away from lack of use.